Yeah, how's it going, guys? It's Richie Unicorn Call here, and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I gotta say that this is <laughs> this is probably gotta be one of my favorite updates in a very long time, and it's probably gonna be one of my favorite gear build videos I make in a long time, specifically mainly just for PVE healing. Um, I mean, this is this is absolutely insane, right? This update. Is absolutely amazing, right? So before we go into the build, of course, let me stretch my back. I gotta give y'all the disclaimers. As usual, it's gonna be more disclaimers this time because first things first, this is test realm. As a matter of fact, let me move my head to the left so you know that this is a test realm build. Um, if you guys have no idea what test realm is, it's basically just like an early access look of the new content that we will be getting. So some things are broken, some things might not even make it to live realm. So this build will only be specific to this test realm and not the live realm. Because personally, we just don't know what they're going to do in Live Realm. We don't even know if some of the things are going to make it in Live Realm. Some things usually get delayed or usually scrapped. So, again, we just gotta wait and see. But, um, personally, I love this update and I think it's awesome. Now, the second disclaimer is, of course, this is not a raid build. This is not a PvP build. It doesn't even matter if you bring some of these builds in raids or pvp because remember that those game modes or game types they have their stat limits and i think like the stat cap for like uh i don't know for raids last i checked was like 112 or something like that yeah practically you don't really want to heal too much in raids honestly they kind of like banned a bunch of heal spells here and there and you know the stat caps of course but for pve wise um i wouldn't even recommend this for pve as well you know, there might be some stat losses that you might not like. And, of course, one of the Athems that we will be using is a Retired Athem. It doesn't exist anymore. So, again, a few things there. And, of course, same thing for PvP. All you Jade Stallers out there. I know you guys are going to love this update. But, trust me, uh, you don't want to bring some of these builds in PvP, alright? But, we're going to go right into it. We're going to jump right into it. And, uh... Dude, I'm just so excited. <laughs> this one's for you, Zachary Grove. You're definitely going to love this update. I think all the Life Wizards are going to absolutely love this update. It's it's such a nice update, man. So this is for level 170 as well. Forgot to mention that. All right. <clears throat> so one real quick note is that I don't think they released the spoiler wall yet. And the new gear I didn't want to purchase just to... I don't know, I didn't want to spoil the fun for it, but also some of the stats I wanted to, like, write on. I was like, huh. The only thing new I got is basically the deck, but let's jump right into it, and I'll show you the level 170 build. Um, so, for the hat, again, this is kind of the same thing as the level 160 build. We basically have the same hat, the internal, eternal inspired helm, which kind of rivals the inspired Aeon helm. I saw someone mention this thing, it was Zachary. The thing I don't like about the inspired aeon helm is that it has low resist right and the jewel that we are currently using doesn't really have uh, resist not resist but the not the jewel the amulet the amulet that we have has no resist so i kind of don't really want to risk any of the stat loss with that I don't know. Another thing about the Inspired Aeon Helm is that even though it does come with more health, it comes with a little bit more pip chance. Um, again, you're losing a uh, 3 resist, and you're lowering your accuracy just a tiny bit. You get more critical, more damage, but we're not really worried much about that. But one thing that's missing is Shadow Pip Rating. So you'll notice that the Eternal Inspired Helm, it has Shadow Pip Rating, but the Inspired Aeon Helm doesn't. So if you're all looking to use some Shadow Spells, or at least some of the new stuff they got, um, you know, you can't really use it. But if you do want to get more health, you definitely use it. But for me, I'm just going to keep it real and use the Eternal Inspired Helm. And then, of course, with most of these gear pieces, you definitely want to farm for the 29 percent outgoing healing pin this pin can be acquired in dueling space dungeon and novus so make sure you go farm it and they do drop like hot candy though it's not really hard to get it it's actually quite easy 
And I also have the death disabling pin um, as well. So whenever I'm casting some death spells, like the kiss of death, I can get that critical, yada, yada, yada. So that will also help as well. You can honestly put whatever you want for the sword pins. Whatever you want to get criticals on, it's totally up to you. But definitely for the shield pin, you want that 29% outgoing, right? And previously on our gear builds, we kind of like talked about every, all the numbers. We're not really going to talk too much on the numbers. I don't want to make this like a super duper long video, but you know, main thing aside, this comes with like 1000 health, 10% pip chance, a big crit block, um, resist, some life accuracy, some critical, and some damage. And of course it comes with that shadow pip rating. So again, pretty cool stuff right there. Now to the robe. It's the same robe. Nothing, nothing really new happened um in this update you know nothing really stood out to me um all of the robes and i think that we're gonna get um they don't come with shield pins so if there was a robe out there that did have a shield pin i would definitely equip it because that way i can put the 29 percent outgoing on it but until further notice Right now, I'm still sticking with the Spooky Carnival suit. This is the level 130 version. Again, this one is just awesome. It also comes with 7% um, universal accuracy, 20% outgoing, and a chunk of resist, which we love. We love resist. We're not trying to be a glass cannon here, all right? And, of course, it comes with that Kiss of Death spell that we love. They basically you take 1,000 damage, and you give 750 to all of your allies. So, again pretty cool stuff right there but honestly for the robe it's up to you you can choose whatever robe you want um this robe just has just worked out for me for all the builds and just overall for the many years i've been playing this game this is such a fun robe to have all right then for the boots again this is coming in from novus or the um Great Inventor Pack, or whatever that's called, the Novus Explorer Pack. It doesn't matter, it's the same thing as Novus. Um, you know, Eternal Inspired, whatever you want to call it. Again, same health, 1,000 health, you know, 7% pip chance, a lot of critical block. Again, you're getting some resist, which resist is good for the loss that we will be taking. And then we got the 29%, uh, whatchamacallit, 29% outgoing pin. Make sure you're farming for those pins. It also comes with Shadow Pip rating, which, again, we love. And then also, we have a little bit of a little Life Pip conversion pin here and there. Um, in this update, you'll notice that some of the jewels have gotten a little bit of a difference, or at least the new jewels that we will be getting, hopefully, and Wallowoo will stay this way, uh, because some of these pins are amazing. The sword pins, from what I've seen, kind of seem the same, except you get a little bit more critical and stuff like that, a little bit more value out of sword pins, but now you can actually get conversion pins of your own school. So right here, I have a life conversion pin, which is a plus 61 pip conversion which is pretty cool. You can put whatever you want for the pins, honestly, for the power pins. If you want to get some fire accuracy or a death conversion pin, you can do whatever you want. It's up to you, but I just put the life conversion pin to try and conserve some pips and, you know, save up on the pip flow, you know? But pretty cool stuff. And this, now we're getting into the best part of the video, right? So basically, the hat, robe, and boots pretty much stay the same as the previous build. But let me say this, that this is when we get crazy. I know everybody's gonna be like, what? So here we go. Remember everybody was talking about the Emeralds, Kalman's Scepter, and ah, oh, the Sword of Kings is like the best outgoing one you can have. Oh, oh, you should go with like the Silver Order of the Spiral. Nah, nah, son. <laughs> After this update, nah, son, nah. So, again, and I farmed for this wand quite a bit. It, it took forever. I think somebody actually gifted me um, this wand through the packs, I think. But, um, 85 critical block, 85 critical, 20% base outgoing, and you get 1 plus pip chance. And then also, this is the kicker, you get a square socket with this wand. And I've always loved this wand for its square socket to kind of put, like, whatever you want, like an incoming or you know, flat resist or a stun resist, but now, forget all of that, the new square sockets have mending, 8% mending, which is completely insane, and this is called the Unearthly Mending Opal, so definitely make sure you, I will be farming for this 
when Waluigi drops. I will be farming for hours for this because any square socket that you have, you can put this square jewel in. That goes for amulets. That goes for wands. You can put this on anything that has a square socket, including decks. So again, this build, this is like my dream right here. So already off the bat, the wand itself is 28, 28 outgoing, which far exceeds the Sword of Kings. And also we're getting some critical and critical block. Right? So it's kind of like a balanced wand, in a sense. I don't know if there's any other outgoing wands out there that have a square socket, but this, for me, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. I feel like Keith Lee. 10 out of 10. <laughs> now, over here, we have the Dark Woman's Dagger. Yes, uh, no, this Atham, you cannot get any more, but yes, I still use it because I like the flex. I like the flex on the newbies, you know? Surprisingly, I have a few of these in my gear vault. I've just never gotten rid of them before, but honestly, probably one of the most awesome Athums you can get as a life wizard from its time. Again, 20% outgoing, then you get two circle uh, jewel slots, um, so that goes up to 8%, 8%, and then you can put whatever you want for the triangle jewel. We're going to use the 10% pip chance for that, and then for the tier jewel, you can do whatever you want, get you some more health. And, you know, of course, this is the level 99 version. Again, it just does not drop anymore. But the balance of stats that it has is absolutely at god tier. Of course, you can go with the Void's Lively Atham, which is also from the Raids, which is kind of hard to get. But there is also another Atham, which is available um, in Wallowoo, that also could be rivaling the Raid Atham as well. But personally, for me... I'd rather just stick with the Void just because I'm too lazy to farm for the Atham. And um, the Dark Woman's Dagger is also pretty cool if you do, if you are fortunate to have this. But um, again, that's just 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Now the amulet, this amulet, bro, let me say this. When Zachary Grove told me about his amulet, I could have sworn I had it in my gear vault one day. I was like, I could have sworn I've seen this amulet somewhere. But let me say... This amulet is pretty cool, but it comes with a humongous, humongous drawback that I don't like. It, it is a low-level type of amulet. So, first of all, let's go over the stats. So, no mana or anything like that. It's just, like, straight up. I don't even think any of the... No, I don't think any of the amulets even give mana. I don't know why I said that, but... Basically, you get 115 health. If you play Call of Duty Zombies, you know what I'm referencing. 2% uh, outgoing healing as a base, which... We don't really see that a lot with amulets nowadays, and this is just one of those amulets that gives an outgoing stat, which is pretty cool. Now, the problem I have with this amulet is that it does not come with any resist whatsoever. So you are going to be taking a chunk of resist off at the cost of basically 2% outgoing. But also what makes this a pretty interesting jewel is the spell cards. And not only that, but we talked about those square jewels. So you can put two 8% over here, and that automatically boosts up your outgoing, right? And you don't even have to do it just for this amulet. You can do this for multiple amulets, right? Any amulet that has square sockets, you can get that square outgoing and put it on. But... What I really love about this jewel is that it comes with this Guiding Light. It's at plus 35%. And then it also comes with the 7 Pip Rebirth, which is 730 health, plus a 400 and I think 50 Absorb, right? And this is a really good item card to have because sometimes you'll be in those positions where you really need to cast an AoE, but you don't have the 8 Pips for the Rebirth, so maybe you can use that 7 Pip instead. And yeah, you can... It's just so much fun, man. This update is amazing. Now, if I do need a little bit more resist, I will go with the Lively Nightmare Gauntlet. Or, not the Gauntlet, the Lively Nightmare Amulet. It does come from the Nightmare Gauntlet or the packs. And, uh, basically, again, it comes with those square sockets. Definitely make sure you farm for those outgoing square sockets. And, of course, it comes with 10% resist and definitely way more health, right? But, if I'm doing low level, I'm definitely going to do the Jewel of the Virtuoso Soul. Or have a virtuous soul, however you pronounce that. Uh, shout out to Zachary Grove for telling me 
about this amulet because it comes from the lower zigzag. Um, it comes from the wooden uh, key chest. So make sure you definitely form the lower zigzag and check this amulet out. Would highly recommend it just for low level. Wouldn't really recommend it too much for like some of the other high level stuff. But um, yeah, it's a pretty fun amulet. It's it's amazing. Forgot to mention also over here for the wand. Um, you can get this from one of the packs, I believe. I'll just leave it linked in the uh, top pinned comment of where to get it. But again, this is a pretty nice wand to have. But going over to the ring again. Like I said, the stone of the other side will always be the most goaded outgoing ring in the entire game. Alright? No, it's not the little ring of the dying star. I've seen a couple of those. Nah! This one is straight up elite. And let me tell you why. The reason this was, well, it is still one of the best outgoing rings because the base outgoing you get is 33%, right, plus a health tier, whatever, you can put some health in that. But then you also got that circle drill, right, so you can put an 8% on there, right. But now, with this update, you can again, what did I say about square sockets, put that 8% square in it. Now you have more, way more outgoing. And it doesn't have to just be this ring if you wanted to do a different ring, you can do whatever you want, but dude... The amount of outgoing you're getting is absolutely insane. This update is like a life wizard's dream. I, I I absolutely love this update. Personally, for me, I love this update. If you don't like the update, hey, that's all you, man. And then for the pet, we're bringing back an OG pet. That's Dr. Angel. Yes, this is my dryad pet I made years ago. And it is a pretty awesome pet. Um, it comes with a 5% resist, 10% resist, so basically spellproof, spell defy, 8% outgoing, may cast unicorn, which is good for a little bit of AoE healing, or yeah, just healing up teammates. And then we also got the may cast healing current for myself in case I'm taking a lot of damage, why not? And then over here at the bottom, we have that one Krago Jewel which is basically the 4% outgoing substat, and then also a Maycast Pigsy Jewel as well, because I know a lot of y'all in the comments were talking about, oh, Maycast Pigsy is just so much better, man. Maycast Pigsy is just the best. And then, yes, I finally went back to the Maycast Pigsy pet, so you're welcome. It does a base of, I believe, 750. So already, if you get this casted off, then it's going to do a lot of healing. And like I said, it comes with Unicorn, which the base for Unicorn is at 465, which also just does a lot. And then it comes with Spellproof, Spell Defy, to just help out with the resistance, stuff like that. Honestly, I would replace the Energizing Battery with Cycle of Life. But here's the thing with Maycast Auras that I have a problem with. They don't really cast too much unless you're, like, trapping or blading or, or doing something like that because... Back in the day, Cycle of Life used to cast so much, back in the OG days. And then they started touching the May cast, and then they rarely cast, and blah, 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 blah. It's a whole process, but do whatever you want for your pet. I just love having Dr. Angel around. And plus, the Spreet Swarm is kind of fun to use. And, of course, the Hammer Dryad, again, is amazing. A base of 800 to all your friends, plus removes uh, a damage over time off of your allies. It's just... One of my favorite life spells. Absolutely, absolutely love it. And then coming in for the mount, of course, we got the Mammoth Mini Hermanent Mount, which you can uh, get in the crown shop or you can farm for it. It's up to you. But this is a pretty cool mount to have. It gives you that 2% outgoing stat, which is pretty nice. And then lastly, but not least, the deck. And let me say this. <laughs> This deck, by the way, I forgot to go back to the ring part. You can get this in Avalon, right? It's in Avalon. So going on from the deck, this is probably like the first time I have ever seen them make a deck that have a circle jewel, right? This is absolutely insane. And this is probably like my new favorite deck in the game, right? Max spells at 64, max copies for max life copies is 6, the sideboard is 36, so, you know, basic, you know, basic cards and stuff like that, you know, basic amount, just texting my mom. And over here, you get a decent amount of health, 165, 70%, or 79% critical block, and you're also getting a little bit of critical, too. I think the 
one deck I was running was from the raid, and it didn't really have much critical. I'm trying to find it, because this deck that I had, where was it? Where was it? Where was my deck? Oh, there it is. Yeah, so the one I had, the Void's Lively card, um, this had the pip conversion, but it didn't have critical, which you might feel differently on. But when I'm using this deck, I do get the critical without the pip conversion. You're also getting that plus one the white pip, and then you're also getting plus 55 arc mastery. And then you get that circle jewel slot, which again, if you have a mending pin, which I had a spare in my backpack, put an 8% on there, more outgoing for you. And then the jewel card that you get, or not the jewel card, but the card that you get, a star blade, which is a plus 35 to the next life, death, and storm spell. Which is, I mean, it's just, I love it, man. It's just, it's just an awesome update, man. I'm gonna be really sad if some of this stuff gets scrapped. But, dude, a star blade, that will definitely come in handy. Especially if you're questing with a storm wizard, or a death wizard, or another life wizard. Or for yourself. You can use it for yourself. So, anyway, that goes for the build. Now we're gonna do a colorway transition to basically the overall stats of this build, which is pretty insane. And now we are finally back. Took me forever to finally get some time to actually sit down and talk. It's practically the end of the day. But now we are gonna like, uh, basically check out the overall stats of like everything from the resist, the outgoing, the pip chat, all of it. So without further ado, let's get started. First, we're gonna start off with hell. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention there will be like kind of separate mini bid like builds within this video. It won't just be this one, you know, this won't be like the go-to set. There will be multiple little snippets here and there of all the other builds. But basically the main health, you're at least gonna be pushing like 10,000 health, which is pretty cool. Mana, we don't really care about much about mana. You already have an, an already excess amount of mana. Uh, the base is at uh, 150, uh, basically in total we have 536 mana, but again, you don't have to really worry about, uh, mana and all that stuff. Uh, damage-wise, it's 73, which is kind of low. Uh, we're not really looking for damage, though. This is strictly healing. Uh, over here for the resistance, 64 resist, which is super, super low. Wouldn't really recommend anybody to tr try and run this set. It's just... You know, if you notice that you're taking a little bit of damage, then, you know, it's kind of like up to your own gameplay options. Some people might want way more resist. Some people might not even care for resist and might just go directly for outgoing. The thing about this uh, build is that you can go, you can exceed to this amount, right? This is just a build that I'm working with for myself because it personally works for me. You can go way beyond the outgoing limit. Um, over here for accuracy, it's 19 accuracy, which is basically perfect for it. Life Wizards, you're basically looking for about like 19 outgoing, like 15, not outgoing, but 19 accuracy, 15 accuracy, because most of the life spells are about like 90 to 95 percent or 85% accuracy, so you really don't honestly need that much life accuracy if you are a life wizard, honestly. But uh, moving on from that, this is where we get to the best part, and this is where it gets juicy. <clears throat> okay, so over here for the critical rating, it's going to be set for 349 for life and 367 for death. The reason that the death critical is so much higher than the life is because we're utilizing all of those new sword pins. The level 170 sword pins are amazing. They have a lot of value with them, so make sure you definitely check that out whenever Wallaroo does release. And then the block rating is at a whopping 593, and that is all across the board for basically all schools and elements, uh, universal block, so pretty cool stuff right there. Um, Armor piercing, no armor piercing because again, this is a healing build. We are definitely not worried about piercing through armor. And there's also no stun resist, which you could replace all of those square sockets with stun resist. But remember that you're going to be losing all of those outgoing 8% jewels. So you kind of have to like 
figure it out yourself. You know, it's kind of based on your playstyle. I kind of gave up with stun resistance because, you know, I'm always getting stunned like 24-7. I'll probably just cast myself like a stun block here and there and, you know, I'll be set up for life. But our incoming healing is at zero. A whopping zero. But the outgoing is... I mean, dude, you can see the numbers for yourself. The, the outgoing is just all over the place. Set for... 231% outgoing, and that's not even including all of the environmental stuff like Cycle of Life, which is a 25% outgoing aura that uh, you can get or cast, and that basically shoots it up to about like probably like uh, 5 or 6, so like 256, my math might be completely wrong for that. Um, and then let's say you have a cycle, or not cycle, but a sanctuary up, right? And, you know, it might depend because they have the treasure card sanctuary, which is a 60% outgoing on heals or whatever. And then they have the regular version, which is just like at a 35% because they had nerfed it back in the day. Back in the olden days. But, um, yeah, you can definitely make your outgoing go higher, especially with certain gear types. And then finally, but last uh, but not least, this is the probably the most important part of why I like this build for myself. But, oh my goodness, the pip conversion. <laughs> Look at the pip conversion. 454. So, 454 pip conversion. So, we're going to be saving up on some pips. And then our power pip rating is at 102, which is pretty nice. Our shadow pip rating is at 129, which is pretty decent. Then our arc mastery rating is also pretty nice, sitting at 191. So we're going to be getting those school pips a lot more often. If you, got, if you guys don't know what Arc Mastery is, it's basically like school pips and stuff like that. It's, you know, if you want to cast Pigsy, you'll need a life school pip. So if you have a high Arc Mastery rating, you will, you know, basically be getting your life pips quicker. Um, so again, that is the build. And there's some mini builds with it as well. I made some gear sets. So let's say, you know, let's just say... All right, I need a little bit more resist. You know, I'm not feeling the 64. Let's say you need to just a tiny bit more resist. Well, over here, we can go over here. Now our resist is at 74%. Now the reason the resist got jacked up all the way to 10% is because we're using the Lively Nightmire amulet, which is the same amulet that we used um, in the level 160 build, right? This is a really good uh, resist defense amulet. Comes with a chunk of health. Um, it comes with 10% resist overall, so that's pretty good. Pip conversion, a little bit of critical block, and remember, it has those two square sockets in there as well so when you are questing in wallaroo or you're a level 170 then you can you know put those outgoing jewels on it so now you can get a little bit more value out of those square sockets right so this is a pretty interesting build it's pretty decent you're going to take the loss of two percent because of course we're not using the jewel of virtuoso or virtuous soul um unfortunately again this is a nice amulet but again it has no resist on it, you know. If it had a little bit of resist on it, I would have used it all the time. But, you know, no resist. It kind of sucks. But, in a way, this is a really good amulet to have either way. Especially if you're in low-level stuff. So, definitely make sure you keep an eye on that. Honestly, you could probably use this jewel in uh, Wallaroo. I was actually helping some people out in Wallaroo team-ups. And I had no problems with this jewel whatsoever, right? It just might be a different playstyle experience for some people. If you want more resist, run a different amulet. And if you don't care for resist and you want outgoing, go for this jewel or amulet. Just check it out. And then over here, we got my ultimate build. And again, the power pips stay the same. Pretty much everything stays the same. But let's just say that I wanted to go for a little bit more health and I wanted to go for like a really chunky build I would go for the novice healer set right here and then basically this is replacing the Atham which is the voids lively Atham which comes from raids which I'm not a big fan of raids honestly I'm sure nobody else is a big fan of raids but I will say that it's probably easier to do the dragon spire raid which is how you can get this Atham as well um, yeah, it's a really good Atham to have. Tons of health and pip chance and whatnot. And again, it has two circle, um, has two circle uh, jewel sockets. So 
you can put the outgoings on there. Now, it has a little bit less base healing than the Dark Woman's Dagger, so do keep that in mind, but it is kind of handy to have a little bit more health. And then over here, our health is now at about 11,434, and it probably could go higher because remember, you have these square sockets, and you know, the outgoing pin or a square, that's not the only outgoing thing. You can actually put health sockets on the squares. So if you wanted to get way more health than this, by all means, go for it. <laughs> you can, I've seen like, I think an ice where they got like 15,000 health, right? It, like, it's absolutely insane the amount of combinations that you can do within this Wallaroo update. It, it's absolutely amazing. That's why it's one of my absolute favorite, absolute favorite updates uh, so far, in a, in a very long time. But those are all of the builds, and the outgoing does shrink down by a lot, um, by 220. Some people might be fine with 220, others might not be, but um, it's up to you. Honestly, for me, if I'm playing the game right now, the Wizard City Healer set is kind of rocking. Like, I'm rocking with it. I don't notice that I'm dying a lot at all. I might be taking a little bit of damage, but, you know, it's nothing that 231 outgoing won't heal up, you know? And yeah, that's pretty much it for that. And so, what do you guys think? You think we're done with the video, but now we're not. We're actually adding this on. Uh, this is a new kind of thing. I'm going to be talking about spell deck setups and stuff like that. Because, of course, a lot of people have been asking me, like, yo, what should I pack? Or how do you play whenever you heal? A lot of people never really see me like heal or really in combat so i'm here to kind of set up the deck and just show you all the spells that we have at our disposable which it can be a lot you can put whatever you want in it but the one thing you want to do as a healer is to make sure you stack your deck now the reason for this and again this might just be a gameplay preference but you don't really want to go to a moment where you run out of heals. You never want to run out of heals. You always want to make sure you have a full deck. You don't want to want to have like five cards and that's it. You you know you want to make sure that you have a full deck. Now obviously some people might run a small deck just because it's easier to pull a card, which is also nice. But for me, I always love to just fill this whole deck up to the very last one and make sure I am using the most I can. You don't need the wand hit, so if you have wand hits, you know, you don't really need that, unless you wanna like break a shield or something like that, but you don't really need the wand hits. But let me clear all the spells in the deck real quick. Now, going all the way over here, let's start with the astral spell. This is probably one of the easier ones. You definitely wanna put in the health enchant. Um, primarily the Radicals and the Primordials. These are two health enchants, and it basically enchants the health to a plus 150. So I usually pack in all of that right off the bat, right? Now let's talk a little bit about... Yeah, we'll save the heals for later. I want to go to the off-school stuff. So let's say you're questing with someone... And all you have is these enchant. You want to put a little bit more in there, right? So if you're questing with a storm wizard, a fire wizard, or an ice wizard, put in elemental blades for them, right? Even if it's unenchanted, anything will help them. Don't put in elemental traps if you're versing mobs, because usually you don't really want to, like, trap each one. You know, that takes up a little bit too much time. Um, definitely would prefer the blade. And, of course, you can put in the sharpened blade, if you wanted to enchant them, basically it's a plus 10 to any blade you put on. So you can definitely check that out. But again, it's all up to your preference and playstyle. If you wanted to blade your myth or life or a death wizard, um, again, you would just go for a spirit blade and you don't want to do a spirit trap. The only time I would recommend trap stacking is if you're going up against a boss, like a singular boss, or you just want to put more focus on the boss. You can definitely use traps, but personally for me, I just haven't really used traps that much, unless it's like faints and whatnot. Speaking of faints, definitely put in faints, right? Again, you kind of want to make yourself as useful as possible, but again, that might depend if you're reversing a boss, and especially if the boss has a faint cheat and you don't really want to go through the hassle of that, so that might depend on your playstyle and what mob you're fighting, because 
nowadays most mobs are usually just always have a faint cheap so again just want to check that out and then finally i'll leave off with this reshuffle and i'm gonna i'm gonna get close to the mic because i can't tell you how many situations i've been in where a lot of people literally bring one attack card and it doesn't kill and what happens is we sit there for like five hours because nobody has a reshuffle, right? And that's where you come in. Remember, this is a support build, all right? You want to support your team as much as you can. So, yes, you are going to max out the reshuffle card slot. And you're going to put as much as you can until you hear this noise. Until you hear this noise, you're going to fill it. Because, dude, I, I'm so tired of people, like, I can't tell you. Mainly it's Storm Wizards. You think the Tempest is all you need. And then you're sitting there. And then it's like, does anybody have a reshuffle? And I'm just sitting there like, yeah, I got one, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> now, you always, you probably won't even need, most of the time, you will definitely not need all those reshuffles. So make sure you do keep a reshuffle for yourself. But make sure you kind of limit discarding them because... um. Yeah, reshuffles do come in handy in the worst case scenario. So it's just a little emergency card refresh. You know, get your cards back in your hands. And um, yeah, please pack a reshuffle. If you don't have the spell learned, um, definitely make sure you buy a treasure card of it. Like I said, just make sure you have at least one reshuffle, please. Right? Please. I'm, I'm begging you, right? I'm begging you. I'm begging you, man. Alright, so over here, going back to the astral spells, I also like to put in a little bit of an empowerment. This basically gives you one pip from the incoming rank 4 spells. Now, of course, you can do the other one, which is adapt, which basically gives you a power pip if you're getting hit by like a rank 6 and up spell. But honestly, I'm gonna be honest, most of the time, whenever I use adapt, the enemies, like, they never use a rank 6 and up attack. So, I kind of feel like, in most situations, I don't really need it, where you can use Empowerment, and if you're getting hit by, like, Rank 4 and Up spells, you're just getting that one single White Pip. But the thing is about the White Pips is that at least you're getting something, right? And, you know, if you use Adapt, then you have to kind of know your target. You have to know what spells they're going to be using. If they're using Rank 6 and Up spells, then by all means use Empowerment. But if they're using Baby spells that are Rank 4 and Up, then, you know, I don't know. It's up to you. And again, it's all up to your playstyle. Every time I've used the Adapt Aura, it just, I would never get pips because I'm never getting hit with those rank six and up attack spells. So, um, again, would highly recommend Empowerment. It's also good just to keep your pip flow so you can keep casting those spells and keep your team alive and safe as you have a constant pip flow, right? It's kind of like a, honestly, when I think about this build, it's kind of like almost like a, a pip battery of some sort. I don't know. You're kind of like a battery for the team. Um, speaking of pips, um, there was a awesome spell that came out with the Waluigi update. It wasn't even in the patch notes or anything. Um, this comes from Velma in the Arcanum. And I just want to say thank you to the devs or whoever that put this spell in. Because this is probably one of the best. Probably one of my favorite. I'm not going to say it's the best because some people might not like it. But... Personally, for me, this is like my new favorite spell, dude. I absolutely love it. This is called Dark Surge, right? Now, for the cost of a Shadow Pip, and that's all you need is one Shadow Pip, you can basically give any ally on your team, including yourself, two Power Pips, right? You put in four of those automatically. Now, the reason for this is because we get Shadow Pips a lot. At least when I'm playing, I get Shadow Pips a lot. Like, I get them really quick. So, most of the time, I'm not really using any Shadow Magic spells. So, what do I do with my Shadow Pips? I just twiddle my thumbs and just look at them. But, now we have a spell that can, you know, basically give your allies Pips, right? Now, of course, there's Donate Power. But the problem with Donate Power is that it only gives you the White Pips. And it only goes up to like up to like three, like donate three pips or something like that. Donate two pips. And you know, like I said, those are two white pips, but these are two really big power pips. 
<laughs> two power pips is a game changer, right? Like I said, some people might not like it, some people will like it, but personally for me, I'm in love with it, and I've been having so much fun just giving my teammates some pips when I don't need that shadow pip, right? There's also the Donate Shadow spell, which has been in the game already, it's not part of this update. The Donate Shadow, I've hated this spell for the longest because for the cost of two shadow pips, you basically give an ally one shadow pip. I, again, it's just one of those spells where it's just like, that's a terrible spell, you know? It, sh it definitely needs to be a reworked, like, maybe for one shadow pip, you can give someone else a shadow pip and maybe some pips, right? Another thing I like about the Dark Surge spell is that it doesn't take any of your own pips, right? So you don't have to worry about using your own pips in order to cast this. You just need a shadow pip. So, again, highly, highly recommend that spell. Highly recommend getting that spell. Alright, so I think I think we're done talking about all, like, the non-heal stuff. If you want, you can put Shadow Seraph in if you want. You won't really need that. You can also put, like, Cycle of Life in if you wanted to, like, increase your healing a little bit. Again, there are just some things you don't really need in your deck. Daybreaker and Nightbreaker, highly don't recommend it. Just don't recommend any of that. Um, but no, we're, we're ready to talk about life spells now. Oh, for Ice, in case you're fighting a boss that stuns, Highly recommend stun blocks just in case you want it. But again, let's go over to the life spells. Now, let me tell you, <coughs> for all y'all life wizards out there, we have a huge arsenal of heals, right? We got a whole plethora of heals, right? And honestly, for the heals, it's up to you. As long as you're healing and as long as you are keeping the team alive and supporting them, I mean, already with this deck already, you're already supporting them with blades, pips, and, you know, obviously reshuffles, of course. Um, but in heal-wise, and again, we're going to fill this whole deck up. Uh, definitely, we'll just go to the more obvious one, Pigsy. Pigsy is probably one of the very best healing spells you can get. I remember when it first came out and I opened up a bunch of packs, or I actually opened up a couple packs and somehow I got lucky with it. and. Uh, I just was fortunate to get it. It's, again, an amazing spell. Going to the Spellment Path, um, it's up to you. Some of the heals have Spellment Paths, but you can either go to the Bottom Path or Top Path. If you do do the Top Path, then it will be PvP banned, and it's banned from Advanced Combat, so that means you can't use it in Raids, you can't use it in PvP. This is, like, completely off the rails. So you can't do the top pad if you don't want to do like PvP or whatever. But if you do, don't care about that. You can still go to the top path. It again, it's all up to your playstyle. I did the bottom path just for you know whatever. I'm kind of making like a heal overtime, I guess, build. But the um, heal overtime, the base of the heal is has been lowered. But the heal overtime overall has been buffed up a little bit. So again, when you have a lot of outgoing, that heal overtime is going to do a lot of work and so will the initial base healing so you know it really depends on your own play style now the problem with this is that if you do put it on the bottom path you can only have four of these pigsies and i don't believe these can be reshuffled i don't know what that times one is i'm not sure if they can be reshuffled in your deck or not so just to make sure you are keeping uh cautious of that of when you're using them but you know overall for pigsy you can do whatever path you want honestly it's it's a really fun spell so, going back to our deck, we're going to add four of those. Then over here, Regenerate has also had a little bit of a cool little rework, in a sense. Not really a rework, but kind of a similar thing with Pigsy. The initial heal has been kind of slightly adjusted, and the heal over time has been basically buffed. It's a protected hot for basically five rounds. Hot stands for heal over time. So basically you get five rounds of that heal over time. If you have a lot of boost, then that will definitely heal any wizard up. I usually cast this on my uh, storm wizards, so I basically don't have to worry about them. I kind of call this like my babysitter spell, you know? You just give them a big overtime and then you don't have to worry about them, right? Guardian Spirit is a good spell. Maybe put one in there. I don't think you'll need it. 
most of the time you don't really need to like get revived but maybe you want to put it on yourself for good measure or something i don't know but that's also a pretty nice spell to have in case you're just a little bit worried of course you always gotta go for the goaded rebirth but not too many rebirths the reason why is because rebirth is a very powerful heal right it also costs eight pips so you don't want to just be spamming rebirth over and over again right you actually want to just make sure you're using it at the right time when people need healing you also gotta remember that we have our seven pip rebirth from the one amulet that we are using it's a little bit of a watered down version of the regular rebirth but again it still comes in handy you honestly when you're healing honestly nowadays you don't you don't really need to like spam heals or like spam rebirth a lot of times you know it's just kind of one of those things where you do it once and then you know your team should be good to go especially if you're using any heal over time spells like pigsy and stuff like that now speaking of heal over time let's go back a little bit let's go to spree swarm now spree swarm a lot of people might not like spree swarm you know it's kind of one of those things where you know it's a weak spell but if you have a lot outgoing which we do right now it can do wonders and especially if you have a sanctuary up and all that stuff um again it's just a fun spell to have and if you are um in yourself or you know by yourself or with a few players and you have a damage overtime on yourself and you cast a speed swarm it will basically summon a minion that will actually assist you in battle. It will actually give you heal blades like Brilliant Light and stuff like that. You know, it's just a fun little spell to have. Of course, it's PvP banded, of course. But again, it's just a nice little spell to have. You don't really need Unicorn, but if you do, you can pack it. Again, Pigsy is basically like the upgraded Unicorn, so you really don't need to use it. But if you want to, go for it. Um, is there anything else? You don't really need Guiding Light. I think we have, like, already enough buffs for that. I don't really think we... <laughs> I don't think we need that. Maybe a few Sanctuaries here and there. This is the Watered Down version, so that's at 35%. But honestly, that's pretty much all the spells I can recommend. You might need a Seder, maybe? Again, it just depends on your playstyle, man just really depends on your playstyle. Wings of Fate is definitely really good because Wings of Fate Wings of Fate is basically kind of like a shield breaker. You're not really going for the damage. You're basically just going to break shields and not only that, it will have a damage overtime on all the enemies for five rounds and also give everybody on your team a heal overtime. So, Wings of Fate is also pretty good to have. The only concept or con I don't like about it is that it requires a Shadow Pip. So, if you don't like Shadow Pips or if you don't like Shadow Magic, don't put in Wings of Fate. But, again, if you want to have more heal over times, you can put it in, right? And that pretty much wraps it up for the entire deck setup. Honestly, for the rest of it, I would just put in some random spells that I don't need or... That probably will just discard maybe a satyr here and there and stuff like that. But honestly, as long as you have a lot of like healing spells, you should be fine. Honestly, you should be fine. For your treasure cards, you can put whatever you want. Maybe some extra heals here and there. Maybe some sanctuaries. You know, it's kind of up to you on whatever you want to do, right? It's, it's all part of your own gameplay and whatever makes you the most comfortable. But now we're going to segue into the gameplay aspect and basically how you will be playing or how I play whenever I am, you know, healing others and playing a support role. <laughs> Alright guys, so here we go. We're just gonna do a little skirm and mash a uh, little little skirmish with the uh, Lost Souls. So uh, yeah, let's go into it. So automatically this is our deck. Yeah, I know it looks disgusting. It's gross. I know but like I said in the beginning um, You can make the deck however you want with as as long as you're healing people as long as you're supporting them you know, you're alright, and, you know, already off the bat, we get an Elemental Blade, maybe you have a Storm Wizard, um, we have a Radical, I'm gonna put the Radical on the Spirit Swarm, and I am gonna Blade the Storm, I wish I had a Storm, but I don't got one, but, going on from that, you wanna be cautious of your pips, and these are kind of tips for combat, whenever you're healing, 
um, just because it right off the bat we already get a shadow pip second round I mean wow um, we have a primordial I am gonna use it on the rebirth and then we also have a reshuffle we're not gonna discard the reshuffle just because we need that we would have already used a blade on the storm wizard or fire wizard or whatever it is and we have another elemental blade you can discard that if you want then over here we have dark surge I'm gonna cast it right now you see how quick we got that shadow pit right I mean second round too I mean that's quick I don't know if that's influenced by the other players that are in the battle with you or what but I'll take it so now we get two juicy power pips and now our wow our whole row of wow we can already do a scion of life already um yeah i put this in as a goof i didn't think i was gonna get this spell third round already wow that is insane and this is a pretty cool spell to have if you have 11 pips but again i highly want to recommend this spell it's just it just takes so much. I also put some Guiding Lights in my deck, because why not? If I'm not doing anything or if nobody needs heals, we can just assume that the Lost Soul did, like, a massive hit. Maybe, like, I don't know, like maybe, like, a Blizzard or, nah, something like a Max Pip Tempest or something like that. Everybody's hurt. We got to help them. Let's do a Spree Swarm. And this will also kind of give you a good idea of the heal values and stuff like that, you know. Just give you a basic understanding. Now remember, I am going to be healing myself with no incoming healing. So the heal values will definitely vary depending on, you know, if somebody has incoming or if you get a critical. Like, we didn't get a critical right here, right? If we did get a critical, that would be hot. But we did not get a critical. I got a Sanctuary, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, we got a lot of pips right now. I'm, just, I'm honestly surprised that I got a Shadow Pip second turn. That's insane to me. And like I said, you don't, you don't have to give yourself pips. You can give it to your allies or, you know, especially if your Storm Wizard's about to attack and you can use some extra pips for the next turn. It's all up to your playstyle, y'all. It's all up to your playstyle. Now I'm gonna do a regenerate. Again, just kind of showing you the heal values that we have. Another Ice Beetle going in for the uh, 893. No critical with a Guiding Light. I'll take A. Hey. hey, that's pretty good to me, man. And that comes from a Spree Swarm. Now we're doing a regenerate. No critical still. Hey, I'm fine with no critical. That overtime is going to do 5,875. And that's with a Sanctuary. So like I said, the healing values will definitely differ. We're going to do a Cycle of Life. Why not? Give us some more boost here and there. And you'll notice, the reason I'm using overtime... Oh, Pat's about to do a heal. And there we go. The base for that energizing battery was at 1719. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> um, your outgoing stat is basically like bypassed all the way through your pet's talent. So whenever your pets cast a heal, it's kind of like if you're doing a heal yourself, you know? It's, it's really cool. Again, another, another Shadow Pip, dude. Like, what can I say? I love this spell. Another Shadow Pip. All right, let's say we get hit by Dragon, and we want to remove those damage over time. So you can do Hammer Dryad, which is a base of 800, and it will remove the damage over time off all your friends. Remember that we have a plus 35 Sanctuary up, and we have a plus 25 a Cycle of Life Aura around us, which is also pretty insane. I don't even know what the outgoing is at right now. My pet is doing a Unicorn, and I mean... What can I, I mean? It speaks for itself, guys. Two thousand five. Like, it speaks for itself, man. What can I say? Like, it just speaks for itself, man. If I get a critical on this, oh my goodness! Like, I don't know what to tell y'all. I got a critical. Oh boy, five thousand two hundred. 
I don't have any incoming. Like, dude, it's just. <laughs> Look, I could do I could do a, a pigsy. Let's do a pigsy. Like, dude, I don't know what else to tell y'all. I don't know what to tell you on Life Wizard. You know, it's crazy. I met Life Wizards that don't know how to heal. I met Storm Wizards that didn't know how to attack. I met Balance Wizard that also didn't know how to attack. I mean... Life Wizards. I don't know what to tell y'all. Look with your eyes. Now, like I said, the initial heal has been nerfed, right? But 5,000... Five thousand two hundred? That is broken. And like I said, Dark Surge, you have that Shadow Pip we're not using and you need some extra pips. Hit it with the Shadow Surge or Dark Surge or whatever the spell was called. It's going to give us those two power pips. So again, well, I mean, it's just busted, man. For those of you concerned about PvP, don't worry, they have outgoing caps in PvP and advanced content, so you have nothing to worry about. Let's just say, um, I'm afraid that I might get uh, obliterated. I'm gonna cast Guardian Spirit on ourselves. The Guardian Spirit has seen a wave of nerfs throughout the years. Um, it can no longer be critical, so if you try to cast it, you can't get a critical on it no more. Kinda miss it, though. Honestly? Now that I think about it, they should bring the critical back for Guardian Spirit, honestly, because since it's PvP banned, they might as well just bring the critical back, you know? When you did get a uh, critical with Guardian Spirit, it would basically, like, heal you for a ton. But they should bring it back, honestly. I mean, it's already banned in PvP. I don't see why not. Alright, I'm gonna draw. And then we got 60% Sanctuary, so... Now the outgoing is about to go through the roof, right? So 231 plus 60 is like 70, 80, 90. Basically like 290 outgoing right now. Again. It's just insane, man. It's just insane. I'm going crazy right now. And make sure you keep those sharpened blades too. Make sure you just keep blading up your, uh, you know, your, your whoever is attacking, you know. You just don't want to sit there and just all you do is heal, right? The heals are fine, but again, you want to make sure you find a way to support them. You can pluck some cards. Usually what I like to do is I'll put like some blades in my treasure cards. So, you know, if I don't get anything in my main hand, which usually happens a lot, then I'll just pluck from some treasure cards and give them a blade. Maybe I'm giving them a dark pack, a dark pack, or a balanced blade, or I'll faint the boss. I kind of stopped using faint after a while because a lot of the bosses just have faint cheats and I don't want to have to look for indemnity. So I usually just stop fainting altogether. But blades, I always use blades. And we have the star blade right here, which comes from the deck that I mentioned from the gear build, which again is pretty awesome. Life, death, storm damage. Y'all get the point of this. I mean, again, y'all get the point, right? Self-explanatory. Just make sure you're healing your team. Make sure you got those reshuffles at the ready. If you do want to get your reshuffles in quick or if you want to change your school pips, you would basically drag your cursor all the way down here to the little icon, the little school icon here. You want to click it and you basically have a whole row array of uh, basically all the school pips that you can acquire. So I'm going to do balance right here. I'm gonna do that. Now, if we get a balance pip, that basically equates to like, you know, two power pips for balance, right? It's kind of like an arc mastery type of thing, as it's implied it is, right? So you can potentially cast a reshuffle without having to use up a full row of like power pips. You can just use like two power pips. So we got that balance one right there, right? So that's cool. Now we're just gonna wait until we get one more. I'm gonna get one more balance pip and then we can use reshuffle. So theoretically, you don't really need mastery amulets anymore, right? You really don't. 
So now we have another um, power pip for a balance as a school pip. So that means we can basically cast a reshuffle. It's not going to take my life pips. I don't think so because I already have two balance pips, which equals to basically four. You know, you're basically a god, right? You, you are basically like the most powerful wizard in the game. The reason we're getting these school pips so much is because our arc mastery rating is so high. And there we go. It only takes those two pips. So, again, if you ever need to, again, another power pip. Remember to always make sure that you keep swapping this out because sometimes you might leave it on and then you just have like a full row of like balance pips, right? So make sure you are keeping an eye for that. Let's do the seven pip rebirth. Let's check this out. But again, it's like, there's so much you can do with this update. I'm honestly really, really excited to see um, everyone's build, right? And remember, our pet has that may cast pigsy, so if you're ever in a pickle or if you just don't feel like healing and your pet pulls a heal off and you know you have a lot of outgoing, then, you know, that pet might just set you up, bro. Like, you don't really have to heal your own team if your pet can do it, right? So we're going to flee this battle and that's going to wrap it up for that segment of the uh, gear build video. And that, my friends, is going to wrap it up for the level 170 Test Realm Wallaroo uh, life healing, I guess, pip battery type of thing for uh, this video. Um, that was probably one of my favorite gear builds in the entire game. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. I absolutely love it. And I can't wait for this update to be dropped. Now, again, this is strictly, as a reminder, on Test Realm. So, there are th some things that might not even be in the game. I don't even know if these jewels are going to make it into the Live Realm. If they don't, then, you know, there goes the gear build. But, you know, if it does happen, I think a lot of people are going to love this update. Especially from the jewels perspective. The jewels are just amazing and then you don't even have to go without going you can go with health jewels and stuff like that we got the damage jewels which are pretty cool um it's just really amazing on what they're doing so big shout out to the devs and everybody that worked hard on the wallaroo update cannot wait to play it live and until then i will see you guys later peace out